My dear friends, yesterday we discussed about what happened a few days before today's gospel, the transfiguration. Transfiguration is a change to transform from what you are. The gospel speaks about the changed and the clothes became dazzling white, dazzling white. But a few days before, when Jesus confessed to Peter, says, the son of man have to head to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. He have to suffer and die. Now that was a big shock for Peter. Because Peter, James, John, others have left their wife and children, their home. And they were following Jesus. They thought this Jesus will build a Messiah. And we shall get some portfolio, something into this building of kingdom. And all of a sudden now, they get to know their leader will be killed. He have to suffer and die. And Peter is in a way destroyed. He says, how can you say this? He rebukes Jesus. Don't do this. Don't die. If you die, what about us? Where shall we go to work? We left everything and we are following you. And now you are saying after a couple of years that you have to head to Jerusalem to be suffering and die to be killed. And today is the assurance that Jesus gives to Peter, James and John. It takes three of them up the mountain. So today's feast of transfiguration is sort of a consolation. Peter, don't be disappointed in life. In there, they saw the glory it's not about only that, but your master will rise again. And he have to undergo this thing as a part of the salvation plan of God. Now the first line of today's gospel is quite interesting. Jesus took the three, Peter, James and John, and went up the mountain now, he did not go for a picnic over there. He did not go for a party or for some fresh air. He went to pray. And when you pray, when you pray, this exactly happened. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed. The transfiguration happens when we pray. The change comes when we pray. And so we want a change in our life, in our families. We are troubled with so many thoughts. We want answers for our questions. And this change does not come. The answers does not come like a rain from heaven. It comes from prayer. And so Jesus takes them. He was a son of God. He was still connecting to the Father through the special prayer. Building his relationship. And in this prayer, in this prayer, as he was praying, his face changed. The clothing became dazzling white. The first thing we all pick up from today's feast. Without prayer, we are lost. We don't breathe without prayer. Is the prayer that gives us a fresh air. We don't survive. We don't survive without prayer. And it is in this prayer, the first miracle happened. The miracle of this dazzling white for Peter, for James and John. That was the moment of their life. The second thing we receive in this prayer, in this transfiguration, is God's grace. Now Peter, James and John, they were destroyed. 
they were frightened peter was into pieces what's going to happen but when the transfiguration came there was god's grace and saint paul beautifully tells us his grace is sufficient for me same thing to with peter now later later on even after knowing that peter and they have seen this transfiguration again peter messed up in denying jesus isn't it he messed up but this grace that was given to him to come back to fight back is a grace of transfiguration the next thing in today's gospel is the change that brought in the life of peter james and john and as i was reflecting as i was sharing this same concept this morning the change that can bring in our life there was this couple who came to me to discuss about the family issues family issues and i spoke to them about this gospel is through prayer a change can come when we go away from our homes going up the mountain is to connect to god we are into our own families in our own homes we don't have a fresh breath and so i was telling this couple you want a transfer transfiguration a transformation a change that comes that comes in prayer in prayer and the wife responded she pounced on me immediately saying that this transformation father happens every day in our home every day and the precise time she says at 7 pm at 7 pm is a transformation in a house a transfiguration that is when one bottle of whiskey is over by my husband he is transformed he becomes dazzling white and sometime bright red maybe it is a brandy maybe so their argument continued their argument continued it's not only about me the husband said it's about my wife and my children because we are not led into prayer yes 7 o'clock i hit the bottle but they hit the media so my children are with tiktok my wife is with the instagram and her mother my mother in law is with the facebook so this is the dazzling white the transformation sometimes comes in wrong ways when they don't take a essence of prayer this feast is a reminder for all of us transfiguration happens to all of us it can happen any time but when we embrace when we embrace that gift of the next thing in today's feast we can reflect beautifully is what the voice came from heaven the voice of god the father and the voice said this is my beloved son the chosen one listen to him so in the brokenness of the apostles in their doubts in their fear is the assurance the voice is assurance given by god to apostles this is my son the chosen one listen to him and so what are we listening if you have to listen to god listening can be through our sacraments a listening can be to the eucharist to reading god's word 
and living God's word. This is the listening that God wants us. Time and again, we all fail. Time and again, we all fail to listen to these lovely chosen words. The other gospel will say, this is my beloved. And Jesus himself listened to his father. So they were connected. And on this day of transfiguration, we are told, we are told rather, we are reminded. Yes, this is my beloved son. I give for you. You listen to him. You follow him. And one of the best listening is the sacrament of the Eucharist, the Holy Mass, the Holy Mass. As St. John Marie Vianney beautifully puts, there's nothing more important or precious than the Holy Mass. If there was something precious or more important, God would have given us. And Jesus gave us this Holy Eucharist. He said, do this in my memory. Not only once a while, not only on occasion, on celebration, not only when I wish to go to church. The beloved son, the chosen one, the transfigured, gave us this Eucharist to live the Eucharist in our daily life. And how we destroy the essence of this Mass when we don't live this Mass in our daily life. So listening to God's Word, listening to God is what the transfiguration calls us. In our own little ways, in our own families, we all are trying to achieve or rather look for a miracle. We want the healings. A physical healing, the inner healing, we all try to pounce on these healings. The best healings happens at this moment when we partake in the Eucharist. When we receive that body, that blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are healed. We are healed spiritually, we are healed physically. Further on, today's feast reminds us. The dreams and the ambitions of Peter. What did Peter say there? Peter was thrilled to find a place like Mount Tabor. He was so happy to be there. This is wonderful. This is paradise, Jesus. We have the prophet Moses and Elijah who represent the, the law and the biggest prophet and you the biggest prophet and so we have this too we have this fantastic atmosphere so what does Peter says to Jesus Lord let us not go anywhere let us stay up the mountain we shall build how many tents those are sleeping. Three. One for Jesus. One for Moses. One for Reuben. No, not for Reuben. Okay. Three tens, right? Peter was so happy. Let's be over here. And Jesus says to them, Come on. We are not come for a picnic. We have to go back down to where we belong. Yes, it's good. Sometimes we go for retreats to, to, to places we love. And then we always think that we wish it could have been another three or four days to the places we love. But the time comes, we have to go back to where we really have to be. Back to our business, back to our work, back to our problems and difficulties. 
So all, it is all easy to have a comfort. But Jesus' mission is different. Receive the grace of the transfiguration. Strengthen yourself and get back to your homes. Get back to the muck of life. To the difficulties of life. To the pain. To the illness. And that we can do only when we understand the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. So today's feast is a feast that we all enjoy. We thank God that our clothes may not be dazzling white or the Lord wants us our hearts to be dazzling white. That the rays of this Christ the rays can penetrate each one of us. The rays can give us that grace and the strength to follow Christ more closely. And so dear friends, let us pray for each other. Let us pray for every family attending this retreat of inner healing. That every pain that we undergo, every doubt and fear that we fear, the Lord may touch us at this moment. That the transfigured rays of our Lord Jesus Christ may penetrate each of these hearts. The Lord may heal us. The Lord may be with us.